what's going on guys welcome back to the channel so today we're looking at archive 81 a new television series that just dropped today on netflix i just spent the whole day watching archive 81 because how else should someone be spending their whole friday and uh, before we go into it please make sure to like this video if you guys have been enjoying it please make sure to subscribe if you're new but i'm gonna tell you guys my spoiler free thoughts on archive 81 so the biggest name attached to Archive 81 is actually the executive producer. It is produced by James Wan, who we all know is the director of movies like The Conjuring, Insidious. He's given up some plenty of great horror content. And Archive 81 is in similar territory, but it's also a lot different from the stuff that we are usually used to from him. It ha it's scary. It has those creepy vibes. But there's also a ton more genres packed into here. There's science fiction, mystery, it's thrilling. And the synopsis is about an archivist who takes a job restoring damaged videotapes. And it's sort of about unraveling the mystery about the missing director of these tapes and sort of like this demonic cult that's surrounding the whole thing. And so right away, let me just say this about the show. It has probably um, one of the best first episodes to a new series that I've seen in quite some time. Um, the amount of twists and shocks and jaw-dropping moments that happen towards the back end of this first episode is enough to probably leave anyone um, with a lot of intriguement moving forward. You're probably gonna wanna hit the play button on episode two right away. And that's sort of how I felt at the end of every episode. Every episode ends with that feeling of wanting to watch the next one. And one of my favorite things about this show is that it has a lot of inspirations from past movies. Uh, most notably in the beginning, you'll see references to The Shining. Uh, right away, I mean, that's one of my favorite horror movies, maybe my favorite or my second favorite horror movie of all time. We see an overhead car shot of him driving to the cabin. Obviously a reference to The Shining with the same shot. Uh, there's even Stephen King novels in here. He even references the main character as Jack Torrance. And so it's sort of a mix of The Shining. Um, if you've seen Rome Rosemary's Baby by Roman Polanski. Uh, the Tenant also by Roman Polanski. Because it sort of has two storylines going that are interconnected in some way. We have the archivist who takes his job in deciphering these videotapes. Um, so that has like, this cabin fever, shining feel to it. Um, but then we also get put into the shoes of the director of these videotapes, which is where that Rosemary's Baby style comes into play as she investigates this apartment. Obviously, there's something weird with the tenants of this apartment and sort of like the different floors and what's going on. Um, so she's sort of like a fish out of water uh, trying to figure out like what's happening in this apartment. So that's where Rosemary's Baby comes into play. Another inspiration this movie definitely takes from is from the VHS trilogy, if you guys have seen those movies. Or I guess it's not a trilogy now. I think a new one came out uh, this year or last year. Um, but it's sort of the same style. If you've seen those movies, someone puts in VHS tape and then the movie is like sort of like what that VHS tape is about. And this is the same thing, except there's also a lot more focus on the person who's actually watching the VHS tapes. Um, but definitely inspiration there as well. Another cool thing about the show is the amount of movie references they have. There's, if you're a film junkie, there's a lot of little movie Easter eggs in the background with the posters and like, you know, the VHS tapes. I thought that was a cool little nod. But with the actual story, what it does is that every single episode, it'll drop you little hints at what is maybe going on. You know, it's like this mystery surrounding the whole thing and uh, different genres just keep coming in. In the beginning, you think it might be like this cabin fever type story. Uh, and then the second episode just like flips everything on its head. It sort of turns like this science fiction mystery, maybe cult sort of thing. But you never know like what route this show is gonna go. Is it gonna go the supernatural route? Is it gonna go the safe route? And you know, it's gonna be realistic. And then, you know, like by the end, it's just, not what you think. Like at first I was like, oh, this is sort of predictable. I kind of thought maybe it'd go this way. And then the show was like, nah, like this is crazier than crazier than, than what you ever thought. And that's the biggest thing about the show. And that's where the strength comes from the show. It's not really from the performances from the actors. It's really in the shocks and the twists of the story. Cause there are times where, you know, around maybe the fourth, fifth episode, you're like, all right, how many more twists can they throw at us um, before we have to start just like dealing with, with these twists. But no, after every episode, there's just another twist, another shock. It never goes the way you think. And I think it's meticulously paced like that. I would say around the fourth or fifth episode, I thought maybe some things did get re repetitive. Uh, we get a couple of dream sequences that I thought maybe didn't matter. Turns out they matter a lot more than I could ever think. And then even though some episodes may stumble and they may feel a little bit boring or like I said, repetitive, I think by the end, because there's always a twist or a shock or a, you know multiple reveals, it sort of saves the episode and makes every single episode great. The show also has a similar vibe to another Netflix uh, series, Black Mirror. If you're a fan of Black Mirror, I'm sure you'll like this. Very like futuristic sci-fi. Uh, you never know like what you're gonna get with a Black Mirror episode, right? You don't know if it's gonna be creepy. You don't know if it's gonna be scary. You don't know if it's gonna be science fiction. And this show just has all those genres piled in together. 
And so one thing I found about the show, maybe around like five or six, that is a negative maybe, is that like I said, there are a lot of like movie inspirations in here, right? They take a lot of things from a lot of other movies. And sometimes it could feel messy or jumbled because we don't get answers till the very end. So throughout the whole time, we're trying to figure out like how do the, all these different things connect, you know? We have like these intertwining dream sequences, then we go to maybe like an exorcism or uh, we go into like a cabin fever type thing. And it's all these different plot points that are somehow all connected, but we don't know yet. So when you're jumping from one thing to the next to the next, and they're seemingly all different themes, but they're all connected, but we don't know yet, it could feel messy, it could feel jumbled. And at that point, I remember thinking like, okay, this is, if this works, it has to be like a master stroke of storytelling at the end. And I'm not going to call the ending a master stroke. I don't think it's like that, but it's definitely not messy either. And it makes everything coherent enough. And they sort of tell you um, how everything's connected in a good manner that you do feel satisfied um, by the conclusion of this story. And this series consists of eight episodes. And I'd say only episode three is the weakest episode. Every single other episode, I think, is in the same tier of greatness. I'd say my favorite is the first episode, um, and then the second episode is really great. And the finale is also very satisfying and probably my favorite. And then from episodes four to seven, they're all great. It, it's all great. It's all amazing. It's all incredible. And it's sort of like what I like. I love mystery. I love sci-fi. I love scariness. So to have it all together and to have it all you know, be in a coherent manner so where it all makes sense by the end... Uh, it left me super satisfied. So overall, my rating for the show is a 4.2 out of 5. Now, my review may have sounded like it wasn't anything too special, but I really can't stress enough how big I think the show might get. This show could easily become the next like clickbait show. You guys remember clickbait from Netflix. It sort of got a lot of steam. This has the perfect amount of ingredients for it to be trending. You know, it's a mystery. It's scary. It's creepy. It has all the elements it needs to blow people's minds, because in a lot of ways, it did blow my mind. But I also think it could become really messy for a lot of people, and they could not get on board with it. So it's all about, can you get on board with the craziness? Can you hop on this train, accept the story they're trying to tell, and get on board with how nuts it gets, because it does get really nuts. And it's maybe some people are like, and eh, this is too unbelievable for me, I don't like this. But if you're a fan of science fiction, if you can embrace the craziness of all, trust me, it's, an, it's a crazy ride. Um, like I said, my only problems was that sometimes it got repetitive, but the endings always save every episode. And so it's definitely binge worthy. Uh, I mean, I just binged eight hours of it. So it was definitely worth the time I'd say, and don't be surprised. Don't be surprised if this is number one trending for a couple of months. Cause like I said, it has that vibe, has that tone for a lot of mainstream audiences to come on and watch it as well. So I have to say, I highly recommend it. Like I said, one of the best first episodes if you watched already, comment down below. Did your was your jaw like on the floor after the end of that first episode? Because mine was. I was totally shocked, and I was so ready for the rest of this series. Uh, so let me know down below. What you guys think of Archive Eighty One? If you guys have already seen it, if you plan on watching it, let me know down below. Please make sure you like this video if you guys haven't been enjoying it. Please make sure you subscribe for new. I will see you on the next video. Have a great rest of the day.